What's up everybody, welcome to Podcast Now, I'm Alex, and in this video I want to talk about these Dark Picture Anthology uh, titles, these games, uh, they've been trademarked, okay, so I, I really, you know, we've, we've gone over, I guess registered, they've been registered in Europe, we've gone over this before, it's actually how we've gotten the last, I think, at least two games, right, A Little Hope I think was definitely one of them, House of Ashes I think was one, and obviously the one that's uh, coming up, The Devil in Me, that one was was trademarked, we saw it online first, and that kind of gave us the hint of, uh, of what was coming. So we got five more. Now, I want to talk about them. I'll read them out loud, and we can discuss maybe a little bit of what they could be. I also want to talk about the grand scale of things because it actually does shift uh, what Supermassive Games is doing, and I will explain that. So we have the Dark Pictures, The Craven Man, Directive 8020, O Death, Winterfold, and Intercession. Those are the, the next five. Now, I don't necessarily know if they are in order, although they definitely, uh, I think they could be. Now, again, that's five of them. Now that makes it nine in all. So we had three that are already out. We have the, the new one coming out this year. You'd have to uh, assume, right, maybe around Halloween time. And then you have these next five. Now, that brings it up to nine. Now, why is that important? Well, remember when this was originally announced, they talked about how this was basically, an, well, it's obviously an anthology, right? And it was going to be eight. It was going to be eight games two times a year. They were going to release two games a year for four years, get eight games out. And, uh, and, and you know, and people have, uh, you know, said, like, maybe they were just meaning it as, well, that's the starting point. Like, we can keep going from there. Um, because now you have nine, right? So we have season one's finale, which is the this new one coming up, which is the fourth. So you'd have to assume season two's finale is eight and then maybe it goes from there uh you know i i guess my opinion has shifted slightly on this but i really i want to stay true to my thought process that i've always had about this look i i really liked i really liked house of ashes okay it was easily their best thing that they've done since until dawn some people think it's better than until dawn i don't i don't agree even close but i do think uh you know when you compare it to man of medan and little hope it's not even that's not even close right i really think house of ashes is the best one so would I say I have more confidence in them going forward yes I, I think I think that's absolutely true uh there is this confidence that I have in them that I did not have last like September on right right before this game came out I was not very trustworthy of them uh and now I definitely am a bit more and the devil in me the you know the small little snippet we got of that game looks awesome looks really really cool so I'm definitely excited and hopefully they can do you know two games back to back that are really good I guess uh again to kind of stick to my uh, original line of thinking and just not let that go be, be really stubborn there the only thing I don't like and it, it, again, it's been very consistent is I just don't know if making a game every it really it's a yearly release it's like Call of Duty now Call of Duty switches developers and really they have more time to do it maybe Supermassive has different uh, you know sections of the team that are working on several things at once I'm sure that probably is the case but you know it'd be like an uh, Assassin's Creed back in the day or Call of Duty or you know just any of these games that come out maybe too fast and uh, and, and not just too fast, but they don't give the studio enough time to innovate. And that was really the biggest thing. I've always gone back to these things. Remember, they've admitted that they are not going to try anything like radically new when it comes to like gameplay and, and like choosing decisions and stuff. None of that stuff, even quick time, none of that stuff is going to get like a radical you know, change at any point during this anthology. Like, they, they literally admitted, like, we will not do that. We aren't going to do that. So they're basically, and again, like, let me give credit. I think, you know, House of Ashes was really good. They actually pulled it off. But you, I think just on that statement, you're limiting yourself for every single one of the, these games. You know what I mean? You, you really, uh, well, I guess you're banking on just things that, that you hope would work, right? Whatever the new setting is, whatever the new idea of the game is. And if they work, they work. If they don't work, they don't work. I just think... I don't know. I, I, eventually, I think people are just going to get tired of this kind of game. And maybe they would have anyway. You know, if you made it Until Dawn 2 and 3 and all that stuff, maybe they would have. But to have it come out every single year. And now, you know, I think this really expresses the idea that they're not, you know, it's not just eight games. It's going to be more, probably 12 or more. And also, remember, they dropped the two games a year. I mean, that that's not going to happen. That never, I think, was going to happen. It's been a game every single year. They're on year four and four games. They were actually supposed to be done literally this year. This was supposed to be the final year of this eight-game thing. So, I, you know what I mean? The, now we have to go nine years in all, nine years back to back to back, and you keep going for nine times of, of these games. So, you know, it, it is critical of them, but I also, uh, it's kind of like tough love. You know what I mean? I want these games to be good. I do think they nailed it, so maybe... Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm completely wrong, and maybe they can do it and, and, and prove me wrong uh, in the future. But I just think eventually these things are going to get stale, 
in some way. Now, really quickly, because I don't have too many ideas, like the Craven Man, obviously the A in Man is, is like a, a Scarecrow-esque kind of thing, like some sort of supernatural thing. I'd imagine, you know, something like that. The Directive 8020, the zero in the 80 part is the moon, so this could very well be like a space mission thing. You could probably do like aliens. You could do, I don't know, some sort of like sci-fi thing. That would be kind of cool. I like the idea. Oh, death. I really don't. Now, there's like a there's like a playing card, but I can't really... My eyesight's not good, okay, just in general. Um, but I can't really tell. Honestly, the person on the playing card looks like the curator with a, you know, with a hat on. So I, I don't know that for sure. That's just the first thing that I kind of thought of. I really don't have many ideas for that. Winterfold, I really don't. Intercession, I mean, the T is a sword. Uh, so maybe some like medieval time thing. I mean, that could be kind of cool. So, I mean, they're definitely spicing it up. Like every game uh, is going to be radically different in terms of... You know, uh, again, the supernatural thing or what the danger is, you know, that kind of stuff. So, you know, some of these may work, some of them may not work. And I guess that's just what happens when you make so many of these games, you know, back to back. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Make sure, as always, you guys are subscribed to the channel. Hit the bell icon so you guys know when all these videos go up. If you want to follow me anywhere else, I have all my social medias in the description below. My Twitter, my second channel, also our Patreon and YouTube memberships. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you all on the next video.